So, we are on question number 65, a 40 year old man with long history of bloody diarrhea presents with increased abdominal pain, vomiting and fever. On examination he is found to be dehydrated and shows tachycardia and hypotension. The abdomen is markedly tender with guarding and rigidity. What is the most likely cause? So it is A is cystotoxic megacolon and ulcerative colitis, B is uh, small bowel perforation from regional enteritis, perforated carcinoma of the sigmoid colon, volvulus of the sigmoid colon and E is acute perforated diverticulitis. So the answer is A, toxic megacolon and ulcerative colitis. And how is it that there is a long history of bloody diarrhea and uh, it automatically shows us that there is a, that it suggests that it is an inflammatory bowel disease the acute onset of the abdominal pain together with the findings of acute abdomen and uh, system systematic systemic manifestations should raise the suspicion of a devastating complication the picture is the characteristic of acute toxic megacolon and ulcerative colitis all other possibilities listed may present with an acute abdomen but the long history should point to the ulcerative colitis so a long history of ability, ability diarrhea and all the other abdominal uh, abdominal symptoms leads us to toxic megacolon and ulcerative colitis then we have Sixty-six is three days after undergoing an operation for an abdominal aortic aneurysm, a patient has moderate fever, abdominal pain, and rectal bleeding. Okay, has a moderate fever, abdominal pain, and rectal bleeding. What is the most helpful investigation? Most helpful investigation for uh, after the abdominal aortic aneurysm. Uh, so we have angiography, upper GI endoscopy, abdominal ultrasound and uh, sigmoidoscopy and abdominal CT scan. So whenever there is rectal bleeding, we will go for sigmoidoscopy. This is like uh, if you if you have done the previous chapters, uh, whenever there is rectal bleeding, they always you know prefer sigmoidoscopy again and again. So after the repair of the abdominal aortic aneurysm, if you have moderate fever, abdominal pain and rectal bleeding, you should go for with the sigmoidoscopy. That's the most helpful investigation. Uh, let's just quickly read the description, uh, the answer that in patient with the abdominal aortic resection, the most worrisome complication is inadequate blood supply to the sigmoid colon, okay, through the marginal artery. Sigmoid ischemia should be ruled out by the sigmoidoscopy. In the clinical picture described, sigmoidoscopy should be the most important test. Okay, okay, okay. So the next question is 67. A 55 year old woman presents with pain in the left lateral quadrant of the abdomen and fever of 102 degree Fahrenheit. On examination, she is found to be dehydrated and has tenderness in the left lateral quadrant okay a ct scan shows a mass in the left lateral quadrant involving the sigmoid colon okay going somewhere here there is a minimal amount of free fluid and no free air okay what should the initial treatment of this patient should include so here they are asking about the initial treatment so where we have fever in our scenario and there is a mass and tenderness and uh, something a mass involving the sigmoid colon and minimal amount of free fluid and no free here so definitely we should go with the antibiotics and uh, there's a minimal amount of free fluid and no free here so and IV fluids of course so definitely the answer is 67 P IV fluids sephosite which is an uh, uh, antibiotic and nasogastric drainage okay the findings on uh, the findings uh, the uh, there is the answer is uh, absolutely the diagnosis is the acute diverticulitis 
of the sigmoid colon. The initial treatment of this condition is expectant with antibiotics with or without nasogastric drainage and antibiotic with specificity against the bacterioids species third generation cephalosporin metronidazole or clindamycin. So, bacterioids species are like you know you mostly found you find them in the uh, abdominal related uh, diseases and uh, steroids uh, uh, further he says that the steroid has no placement in the treatment laparotomy is indicated only after the failure of the conservative management. So, we have three things here that if we are uh, if we come to the diagnosis of acute diverticulitis we would go with the IV fluids first line you know correct the fluid correct the fluids and uh, cefozytin which is a third generation uh, cephalosporin and a nasogastric drainage. Then we have question number 68 and uh, here they have a scenario first that a 72 year old woman presents with the bright red rectal bleeding okay not associated with the abdominal pain okay to deterioration so it's more of a recent so she had previous similar episodes but was never hospitalized examination reveals a pale but alert individual with no significant abdominal findings findings on rectal examinations are positive for bright red rectal bleeding our vital signs are stable and hemoglobin hemoglobin is a little low 9.5 so what is the uh, the, or the real question is the what is the most probable cause of her bleeding so whenever there is rectal bleeding we, we should you know more of uh, more of go towards the diverticulosis because uh, they are mentioning bright red rectal bleeding diverticulosis of the colon now how come it is diverticulosis let's have a look the clinical picture of recurrent bright rectal bleeding that is not associated with abdominal pain is characteristic of diverticulosis of the colon the bleeding in the sigmoid colon carcinoma is of, often microscopic the diverticulitis of the colon would present with the associated pain and diverticulitis of the colon would present with the associated pain adenomatous polyp may present with painless rectal bleeding and the most common condition in this elderly age group is diverticulosis of the colon so we definitely have to keep the age in mind also that here her age is 72 years old and there is a bright rectal bleeding and no associated abdominal pain so that's diverticulosis of the colon moving on we have the patient continues to bleed per rectum and becomes hypotensive to a systolic pressure of 60 millimeter mercury despite blood transfusion oh what is the optimal management plan so the optimal management plan when you you know uh, when you see such hypotensive uh, condition that when your systolic your patient's systolic pressure is falling to 60 millimeter mercury you need to go in you need to see what's what's happening inside so they are just you know they are going for the blood transfusion first blood transfusion laparotomy and subtotal colectomy with or without with or without ileoproctostopy so that's that's how they are you know dealing with this issue let's just go and see what uh, what do they say that they are doing laparotomy subtotal colectomy should be preferred approach in a hypotensive patient there's no time for trying to localize the site of bleeding by scans mesenteric angiography or colonoscopy although the most common the common site of massive, diver, massive diverticular hemorrhage is the right colon a blind right colon resection in an elderly woman with hypotension is fraught with the danger of recurrent bleeding from the left colon the safest and most expeditious management is subtotal colectomy the decision for anastomosis or proximal ileostomy will depend on the stability of the patient okay so uh, laparotomy blood transfusion and subtotal colectomy in the cases of the diverticulosis of the colon moving on we have question number 70 a 60 year old man complains of recurrent attacks of painless rectal bleeding okay 
Colonoscopy reveals normal mucosa between the cecum and the anal verge. What is the most helpful test to determine the cause of bleeding? Okay, so the most helpful test to determine the cause of bleeding. Colonoscopy, they have already done. I think they should go for the angiography because you know they are going for the angiodysplasia here so uh, they are saying that they, that we should go for angiography because to look for the angiodysplasia let's see it says that a common cause of lower GI bleeding that is recurrent and painless is angiodysplasia of the colon in the absence of diverticular in the absence of in the absence of diverticuli or hemorrhoids, the suspicion is even higher for these lesions. Peptic ulcer and Meckel's diverticulum can cause predominantly lower pep peptic ulcer and Meckel's diverticulum can cause predominantly lower GI bleeding. However, the bleeding is usually in the form of melena rather than bright red. So, if there is painless, painless rectal bleeding, it is angiodysplasia, and we should go for the uh, angiography. Moving on, we have a small intestine. The small intestine is characterized by basal crypts and superficial villi. Where does cell division takes place? Okay, where does cell division takes place? So these basal crypts and superficial villi are apparently the part of crypts, where the uh, uh, these takes place. So this is the diagram there they are showing that this is the ischemic representation of villi and the crypts of Lebercon and they are arising from the crypts superficial villi the basal crypts and the superficial villi the cell division is occurring in the crypts let's see they're saying that small bowel turnover can be measured in the rats by auto radiographic studies in which the turnover of cells located in the crypts migrate along the villus towards the tip over a two three day period okay intestinal villus mucosa undergoes intestinal villus mucosa undergoes hypertrophy and hyperplasia whenever an increased food load continuously enters the small intestine so uh, it's like a very uh, very advanced question but you know the we should just you know just memorize that the basal crypts and the superficial villi uh, are present in the small uh, present in the small intestine and the cell division occurs in the crypts and uh, the next question is number 72 a 64 year old uh, 64 year old man has a benign lesion of the colon he is informed that the lesion does not predispose to colon cancer okay so what is the lesion he has so if it is uh, not a colon cancer then what it is it is hyperplastic polyp because the other like adenomatous polyps automatically you know uh, guide guides us to as a possible colonic cancer so let's see what the answer says is all the choice listed except hyperplastic polyps are precancerous lesions okay the carcinoma in the ulcerative colitis ulcerative colitis and familial polyposis are multicentric large villus adenomas may have carcinomatic changes any patient with a colon carcinoma is predisposed to develop a metachronous lesion in the remaining colon okay hence the importance of regular follow-up examinations in these patients okay so the hyperplastic polyp is non-cancerous Ulcerative colitis leads to a colon cancer, villus edema also, and familial polyposis and colonic mucosa in a patient with colon carcinoma. Okay, so we have question number 73 here, which is a 25 year old man complains of rectal bleeding, weight loss, and abdominal pain. Okay, he gives a history of similar complaints in his siblings as well as his mother. Findings on the physical examinations are unremarkable. Okay, except for GUI positive stool what is the most likely diagnosis so if something is present in the siblings and there is a rectal bleeding and weight loss history also so there can be two things here either it is familial polyposis or it's Peutz-Jagger syndrome let's see what's the answer here so 
it is familial polyposis of the colon because it is familial there is a history of uh, weight loss abdominal pain and rectal bleeding and uh, also the, uh, the goic positive stool so this leads us to familial polyposis of the colon moving on we have uh, the answer is uh, b F clinical features mentioned strong family history of family polo familial polyposis although other possibilities this is listed may also cause rectal bleeding and abnormal the strong family should give a clue to diagnosis okay the early onset of invasive carcinoma in these patients makes recognizing familial po familial polyposis very important so here we have moving on we have question number 74 a 55 year old man had previ previous hemicolectomy for a carcinoma of the right colon a 55 year old man has had previous hemicolectomy for a carcinoma of the right colon at this time 3 years after the primary resection a ct scan shows a solitary lesion in the right lobe of the liver what is the next step in the management a 55 year old man has had previous hemicolectomy for a carcinoma of the right colon at this time 3 years after the primary resection a ct scan shows a solitary lesion in the right lobe of the liver what is the next step in the management laser cauterization radiotherapy hepatic artery catheterization local chemotherapy symptomatic treatment with analgesics because the colon disease is now stage 4 exploratory laparotomy and resection of the tumor so they are going for the exploratory laparotomy and the resection of the tumor here for the solitary lesion in the liver it says that many patients who have metastasis to the liver or lung have a resectable tumor okay a reasonable disease free interval has been reported after such resections okay that's good especially with the carcinoma of the colon as the primary lesion so they dealt with the carcinoma colon couple of years ago and uh, now this metastasis to the liver can be dealt with the exploratory laparotomy and the resection of the tumor moving on we have following an appendectomy a 28 year old man is placed on ceftriaxone sodium cefizox this antibiotic is unlikely to be effective against which of the following so it's high it's pseudomonas because we know that pseudomonas is all about fluorescent and uh, fluorescent pigment and uh, the other other routine antibiotics you know doesn't affect it are aren't effective against it so So, okay it that's pseudomonas right, let's see what's so uh, it's saying that cefizox is not effective against many strains of pseudomonas if the drug is used in pseudomonas a higher dose it may be indicated and the antibiotic should be changed if a quick response does not occur Compl complications include cross reactions in patients who are allergic to penicillin it does not seem to have nephrotoxic side effects so it's uh, pretty uh self explanatory that the uh, pseudomonas you know uh, does, is not the 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 cefitoxic toxin is not effective against the pseudomonas so moving on we have 76 which is 68 year old man presents with a crampy abdominal pain and distension with vomiting findings on physical examinations are physical findings on physical examinations are positive for healed abdominal scars oh healed abdominal scars x-ray reveals multiple gas fluid levels wpc count is 12000 definitely raised and what is the most likely diagnosis so if we have multiple gas fluid levels it automatically leads us to some type of obstruction and uh, the old scars you know that's additions due to additions so the answer is small bowel intestinal obstruction due to additions let's see it says that the presence of distended loops of bowel indicated bowel obstruction the clinical features favor mechanical obstruction rather than paralytic ileo paralytic ileus due to infection obstruction due to additions is more common than obstruction due to hernia so additions are important here moving on we have question number 77 a 55 year old woman presents with vague right lower quadrant abdominal pain 
a palpable mass is noted on abdominal examination the mass is painless well defined mobile and non pulsatile what is the most likely diagnosis so a vague right lower quadrant abdominal pain a palpable mass mass is palpable painless painless well defined mobile and non pulsatile i think uh, it is a mesenteric cyst because it is well defined it is mobile and non pulsatile and painless so it's a cyst a mesenteric cyst let's see what does it say in the answer that this is a relatively uncommon lesion okay one sign that may be elicited with a elicited with a mesenteric cyst is that the swelling moves freely in the direction between the left iliac fossa and the right hypochondria perpendicular to the small bowel mesentery axis okay here in the ct scan they are showing that showing the mesenteric cyst ct scan a mesenteric unilocular appearance without associated solid component strongly suggests the diagnosis of benign cyst